Hi, in this video we're going to look at how to do an integrated survey with a Trimble S series tilt station and an R series GNSS receiver. So in a bit more detail, I'm firstly going to look at the detail pole setup, discussion of the resection geometry and then a, a field run through in Trimble Access. The, the version 2019 interface running on a TSC7. So in terms of the, the detail pole setup, you can see on the left here we've got a pretty typical uh, setup in terms of surveying with the total station, but then we've got the GNSS receiver, in this case the R12, on its quick release bracket mounted on top of a, an MT1000 prism target. And in the center here, we can just see that in a bit more close-up detail with the, the quick release screwed onto the top of the MT-1000 with its conventional cap just unscrewed. So when we set up a, a survey style for integrated survey, which I'll show in the following section of the video, uh, it's a case of specifying to Trimble Access which is the conventional or the total station uh, survey style that's required to use and the GNSS survey style. So in this video I'm using an R12 with a VRS as the uh, correction methodology. Now there's only really one other parameter to put into a, an integrated survey style setup which is this one here, which is the prism to antenna offset. So that's the offset from the center of the measuring center of the prism to a reference position for the receiver. If you're using a, an R10, R12 receiver with a, a quick release bracket on the bottom, then if you click here and you look in the help, it'll give you a little table of the various offsets that you can put in for the different types of prism. So for an R10 360 style prism that would be used for the SX10, for example, that the offset is 28 mil, and for the MT1000 it's 34 mil. So that's the distance from the measuring centre here up to a reference position, which is the bottom of the quick release here. So that value will go in the box, and then you can complete the the survey style, and it should be ready to use. Um, in the Following section of the video, we'll be using a, an AT360 active target, and for that, the, the offset is a bit larger at 95 mil. So, for an integrated survey, the most common and recommended uh, setup methodology for the total station is a resection with ideally three or more back sites, and the the GNSS component of the integrated survey is going to provide the coordinates for the back sites. So as per usual, resection best practice, if you can position the tilt station within the network of the back sites, uh, that's the optimum geometry with equal spacing to the back sites and a good distance to each of the back sites somewhere near to the perimeter of the working area if possible. And of course, that's not always practical. It depends on the, the shape and size of the, the work area, but uh, at least uh, we need the... Uh, see if we can get the, the, the three back sites in. Okay, it will work with, with two, but bear in mind the measuring precision of the, the total station is higher than that of the, the GNSS system, so by by measuring three and getting the, the total station somewhere in the center, then we're we're making the, the best of the, um, the GNSS precision. Okay, so in the following section, we're going to look at how we can set up that survey style in the field ready to use and then perform the resection setup and take some measurements both in the, uh, the GNSS mode and the, the total station mode. I'll set up appropriate for an integrated survey. So I'm going to go to the menu button, settings, survey styles, and I'm going to press new to make a new survey style. My conventional instrument or total station survey style here is called S series. 
and the GNSS survey style I'll be using is called R12 VRS. Uh, the next thing to check is the prism to antenna offset information. So at the moment it's set to uh, 0 0.095 but using the little button at the end of the box you can go into the help and you can find the offsets between various receiver and target types. So I'm using an active track 360 or an AT360 prism in this video and the offset measured to the bottom of quick release for the AT360 is uh, 95 mil. So that's correct. So I'm going to tap accept and store. Okay. So now we're ready to start. Can make a new project. Okay, got a project name. It's going to give it a job name now. Entering the job name, uh, coordinate system setting it's set to OSTN 15. We're going to do a, a resection setup for an integrated survey. So the idea is that we're going to measure three GNSS points that we're going to resect from. The ideal geometry being the total station placed in the middle of those three points with them equally spaced around. The total station location. So, having clicked on the integrated survey style to start it, we've gone into resection and it's now asking for uh, an instrument point name. So, we'll pop that in the box at the top. I'm going to pick a station code and enter the instrument height as zero and to tick. The compute station elevation box for 3D measurements. So to measure the first backside points, I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it A. That's where I'm located at the moment. Again, pick a code for the first backside. Check that the angles and distance method is set and the target height is correct. And then tap measure. Okay, so it informs us that the point doesn't have a coordinate, it doesn't exist, do we want to measure it with GNSS? To which the answer is yes. So we're now measuring it with the GNSS. It's going to lock onto the target and straight away measure the same point using the total station. So that happens very quickly. That point's now measured, we can move on to the next backside point and essentially repeat the same steps at the next backside. So we're on the, the new backside, we're going to call this one B. Put in the code and measure again, it doesn't exist, you want to measure with GNSS, so you tap yes. You're going to measure it with the uh, GNSS and then it's going to measure it with the total station straight after the GNSS measurement. And it will then give us a table of residuals for the two points measured thus far. So that's fitting the total station measurements into the uh, GNSS coordinates. So I just pressed the plus point button at the bottom of the screen there to move on to the uh, last of the back sites because we want to measure ideally three uh, to get a, a good robust resection. So we're going to measure again. Yeah, measure it with the GNSS. Let's get that level. There we go. So we're going to measure that up. And then it's going to measure with the, the total station, the S series in this case. And it's going to throw us an initial out of tolerance message. That's the difference between the uh, total station distance and the, uh, the GNSS distance and then give us a standard resection residuals table. So we want to check that table. 
make sure all the residuals are acceptable ideally down below 10 mil and then we're ready to start some topo measurements so in uh, VRS measure mode at the moment you can see the RTK values at the, the top of the screen the precision values I'm going to put in a topo point name and a, and a code I'm going to measure a point using the, uh, the VRS survey style and having done that I now want to switch to a total station measurement so just tap top right hand corner of the screen you'll see the measurement type will change to show HA and VA so you know you're in total station mode there and you can see the total station again at the top of the screen if you want to switch back to VRS or GNSS again just tap back in that top right hand corner and you're back into GNSS mode for uh, taking further GNSS measurements okay so that's uh, how to run through doing a resection setup using uh, an integrated survey style in this case using a, an S-series tilt station and an R12 uh, with the R12 using VRS as the uh, positioning methodology hope you find that useful if you've got any questions about integrated survey setting up the survey style or conducting the measurements please get in touch with us on the usual contact details the office support telephone number is shown here and our support email address and we'd be happy to assist you